excuse, excuse me, uh, thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me. I was just getting a glass of water and I didn't expect it to, the screen to change that fast. Um, hi, I'm Bunny Says. Uh, thank you for joining me for uh, Sherlock Holmes vs. Jack the Ripper. Um, last time we were trying to find out about a cane and I had to, I had to look it up, I won't lie or anything, but I would not have, I probably would not have figured this out. It was back at the clinic's office. I, I should realize this by now. I should, now that I remembered that you could actually use the space bar and C-click, C-click everything. You have to go to the clinic. which I would never have guessed. You go into the clinic and then look at the footprints in front of the fireplace here. These footprints are the same as those found on the rug at the brothel. Now we will look, remember, remember the girl was cleaning up, there was a girl at the brothel cleaning up the rug and we saw footprints there. So, uh, black coal footprints, so. That's what I apparently had to do. I had to come into the clinic and click on these footprints, which I should have realized. But thank you for being patient with me. What can I do for you, my dear colleague? Uh, let's talk about these footprints here. Pardon me, Doctor, but who made the large black footprints there near the beds? The brother of one of my patients. The poor thing had a leg amputated after colliding with a carriage. We arranged to find her a prosthesis. Prostheses are very expensive. How did this man pay? He told me mm. that one of his uncles gave him a walking stick with a chiseled silver knob. I agreed to accept this knob in exchange for a simple prosthesis with harness. But this object is of great value and I could finance half a dozen other prostheses by selling it on Petticoat Lane. Oh... I hope you didn't sell it, did you? Doctor, I have reason to believe that the silver knob that you possess is from a cane that was stolen by the man who brought it to you. And I believe I know to whom it belongs. That's what I was worried about. The story of the uncle seemed a little strange. Nevertheless, you must have proof of what you claim. I will show you all of the knobs that we have here. If you find the knob that the young man gave me, I will believe you. Oh, okay, that's easy. So be it, but something is bothering me. I will need a complete cane, not just a knob. Don't worry, dear chap, build one. I can loan you some tools. Make use of the odds and ends in my cupboard. It'll help get rid of it. Hmm, well, I shall try. I will have to remember the description that Sickert gave. Okay, I actually remember the description. Goodbye, it was Dr. Something Gibbons. About... Until we meet again, my dear colleague. Was it... He said it was 35 inches because I was thinking three foot. Where's the uh, Okay, that's the cupboard. Right? Yeah, okay, there we go. Is, is the whole thing open? Oh, okay. Alright. Uh, Alright, he said it was an ebony cane that was th uh, 35 inches. Is this, what is this here? With a um, a chiseled tip. Is this it? Is this it? What up, Bowie? What is this? This doesn't look like. I don't know what this means. What is this in centimeters or what's what's going on in there? It's at seventy centimeters. It's uh. Two and a half centimeters. Okay, whatever. With a, uh, a chi he's a. I'm assuming this is the tip, right? Plus he's a chisel tip with a ring. Oh no no, he said a chisel tip with a ring, a similar ring. A ring that was similar. Of the are of the same design or something like that. Which is this right and I guess this will be the two there all done Holmes yeah, couldn't they, have done that was better it. Yeah. himself yeah that was what can I do for I you my dear colleague there you go I believe I found the knob from the stolen cane 
which I succeeded in putting back together. That's the one. And yet I cannot give it to you, Doctor. I will only return it to the police, and only if there is an official complaint against me. Would there be a way to convince you to give me the cane? Find me a dozen solid, adjustable harnesses for wooden leg prostheses, and it's yours, Doctor. Dozen? Okay. Goodbye, Dr. Gibbons. Until we meet again, my dear colleague. How am I supposed to find a dozen harnesses? Uh, can I steal one from you? <laughs> what do you say? Go to the police for an official complaint or whatever it was. Some news, Doctor? Yeah. Well, no. goodbye. Oh, oh yeah. We, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the whole point that we, we, we weren't supposed to go to the police. He wanted the harnesses. Okay. Where are the... Let's go back to the clinic. All right. So... Where are the harnesses, buddy? <laughs> uh, come on, Leon. Where do I get the harnesses? <laughs> what can I do for you, my dear colleague? I believe I found the knob from the stolen okay. cane, which I succeeded in putting back together. That's the one. And yet I cannot give it to you, Doctor. I will only return it to the police, and only if there is an official complaint against me. Oh, yeah, Would there be okay. a way to convince you to give me the cane? Find me a dozen solid, adjustable harnesses for wooden leg prostheses, and it's yours, Doctor. It's Goodbye, Dr. Gibbons. Until we meet again, my dear colleague. Where the heck am I going to find that? Okay, can I now go back to... <laughs> Shark holes, or I would. It doesn't, wouldn't. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. What's, well, what's that dude doing? Oh, that's a dead end. Can I go in here yet? No. Down here. No, I looked at all these places. None of these are stores. I was looking for that cobbler store. Well, these are. What about you, buddy? Can you A tell me what that? Shop. Oh. <laughs> oh, how? <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> are you kidding me? It was right there. That's a lie. That wasn't there before. Was it? You mean this whole time I walked by that and I didn't see that? There can't be. No, it would be better not to insist. Really? There's no way. Well... Oh, I don't know. Because I always appeared here. I always, like fast traveled here I never w really walked by yeah but didn't I no look I didn't even no I didn't oh that's right I didn't check out White Chapel Street I never really checked out White Chapel Street because look I didn't click on any of the things Box Row. No, I didn't come here either. Box well, Row. I mean, I, well, I came here for the crime, but not. Yeah. Wow. I didn't. Oh, wow. <laughs> I should have known better. <laughs> okay. I'm, look, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said I loved these games. I didn't say I was good at them. <laughs> I Salomnovich. Uh, possibly Ivan? There's nobody here. How very odd. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe he took off because he... Alright, well. 
and I just sort of slip off with all the honor system. Oh, what? Okay, I say, what? these things look like harnesses. Oh my, they are noisy. Who? Good evening, sir. Pardon the interruption. The door was open. I didn't think that I would find anyone working at this hour. Good evening, sir. I didn't hear you come in. Mm -hmm. Say, those things that made noise, they are really harnesses, aren't they? Yes, horse harnesses. But I must tell you, sir, oh. that the store is normally closed at this hour. That is why I've asked you to return tomorrow. Oh, you, you didn't? That... You didn't ask me to return I tomorrow. I didn't come about my shoes. I came to speak of a cobbler, perhaps one of your former employees? A man oh. with very particular habits. You aren't with the police by any chance. I'm sorry, but I do not want to speak of anything but shoes with you. No, 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 no. Finley I am not a policeman. Counts. I am Dr. Watson. It's Mr. Finley who told me that you might be in a position to inform me. Ah, that Mr. Finley is a very brave man. And if he sent you, then you must certainly be a worthy man also. So, Doctor, who is this cobbler with strange habits? He's the guy who... Oh, yeah. Pizer. The man of whom I speak is called Pizer or Pyther, a man with a frightening face. Do you know him? Yes, John Pizer. He worked here for a while, but he is no longer here. Hmm. Okay, do you know where he is? Uh... Do you know where I can find him? No, and if you look, you will not find him. Why? Because he is in hiding, Doctor. You ah. see, a week ago, a horrible murder took place in the neighborhood. A rumor circulated that he might have been responsible for this crime. They say he has quarreled with women of... Certain virtue in the past, if you understand me. Yes, I do. Uh, okay, now I remember. Pizer actually is one of the guys that was thought to be... He's one of the guys... Um, he is one of the... Uh, the guys that are... Uh, the, the, one of the uh, suspects for the actual... Uh, Jared Ripper crime. Isaac. It is about the Bucks Road case that I have come to see you. I have the certitude and an incontestable witness that Pizer is innocent, at least of this crime, although he has attacked a number of street women. If he doesn't come forward to explain himself to the authorities, he is condemned to hiding and to take the fall for this murder. Furthermore, it will cast suspicions on your community because they must be hiding him. And while the whole police force is hunting for him, they cannot concentrate on the real assassin who roams the streets and, one never knows, may take any one of you any day. If what you say is true, your visit is a godsend to our community, Doctor. I tell you something. I know Sergeant Thick, an honest policeman who lives in the area. I'll tell John's family that he must go there to explain himself. But if you could please go as soon as possible to the police to give them this report that you say is incontestable. I will go as soon as I take leave of you. Thank you. If I can ever be of service in any way, do not hesitate to ask. Well, um, actually, uh, <laughs> I could use a few could harnesses. Could we transform your horse harnesses into harnesses for wooden legs? Adjustable harnesses. A good craftsman can do anything, Doctor. And I do believe that's what I am. Come back in a while and it will be done. That will be my thanks for what you have done. Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah. I, I shall return later. At your convenience, sir. Ah, I am spent. I would like to return home. But I promise... Now then, let's go to the police station. Oh. Oh, oops, sorry, I meant to... I was trying to see if there's anything else I could look at here. Just to make sure. Um, yeah, the, the thing about uh, John Pizer, I I don't know. I believe he's the guy that everybody says is the person that didn't do it. <laughs> like he was he was he was blamed for it a lot. Or he's he's a guy I think I thought was a butcher or something like that. And they kept trying to say it was him or something. And and um. You know, I want to walk to the police station. Where am I? 
Does this show where you are? I guess not, huh? Space station's there. Publish. Oh, well. Okay, I'm not walking all the way there. I will start at Lucy's lodging, so I'll walk down. Um. Uh, assuming that's north. So, um, yeah, I believe he was the guy that everybody thought and they were, uh, were going to try to lynch him and all this and stuff and everything. Because they thought he had something. Oh, okay, I went that right away. Thank God. <laughs> I, I, I don't know enough about... I, I know some of the crime, but I don't really... You know, I'm not a like a riverologist type of person. I, I don't know all these. Yes, that's an actual thing. I don't know a lot about Jack the Ripper. I only know some. What's, what's going on? Meanwhile, there's some woman. Will you? Oh. Yes. No, no, don't do it. Hey, Doctor, you seem tired. Were you wandering the darker parts of Whitechapel all night? You could say that. I have some information on Leather Apron, the man of whom we spoke earlier. Do you know where he is? No, but I can clear him of the Bucks Row crime. A witness proved him totally innocent. Oh, Watson, Watson, is it only now, after many hours of walking, that you decide to pass on the important message that Inspector Abilene is waiting for? But, um, no. But what are you doing here, Holmes? I was worried, well? Watson, and with good reason it would appear. Go give the message to this policeman and let's go home. Nobody appreciates me hanging around here, you know, and it's freezing cold. What? Ah, oh, Cradle, none too soon. <laughs> you will take the testimony of this... No, you continue with your duty shift. I must find Chowder in Ambry Street. He's struck again. Who? What? The murderer. The Bucks Row assassin. Hanbury Street. Let's go, Watson. We have no time to lose. Oh, really? What? What am I... What, 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 the, heck, what the heck is that? Oh, wow. Did it... Wow, are they really going to do that? <laughs> little tiny, tiny little dots like that? Please don't do that. Make big of you choose things like this, please. Because I can't see anything <laughs> like that. Hanbury Street. All right, 29 Hanbury Street. Apparently, there was another murder. Hanbury Street. Let's go, Watson. We have no time to lose. Okay, let's go. Hanbury Street, September 8th, 1880, 6.20 a.m. Looks like there's already dozens of people here. Luckily, there's a... No contamination of the place, huh? <laughs> PM. Uh, let's see, Richardson, packing case maker. You can go in, Mr. Holmes. She's there. We didn't touch a thing. What, so I'm the first person that have, has to see her? Really? What about you we people? We don't much like people with your looks around here. Understood. I get it, I get it. Hey, give me a little something, you cheapskate. Drop dead. Here we go. Hmm. I have nothing to ask. Okay, I thought maybe she might. What do you think, Watson? What are we doing, Holmes? Okay, okay, okay. I know. We should go in. I just sort of dreading going in. Alright. Let's do this. Presumably it's not upstairs. Oh. What the hell is this? Is there a back entrance? Oh, it leads onto a back sort of yard, and here's the body. And yeah, it's that girl. It was very good of PC Chandler to let us pass. He said no one has touched the corpse. It's the perfect opportunity for us to put our skills to the test. Watson, let's not waste it. Hmm. God, uh, really? Okay. Hold on, let me talk to this policeman first. Hmm. I have nothing to ask. Okay, I guess not. How about this art house? What a stench! Nobody is hiding inside. Okay, good. Is there... What, what, what is this? 
Is that our apron? This apron is soaked with water and has left a clear mark on the ground. It must have been left in water for several hours and has been there for some time. What? Really? What could that mean? What is the bizarre clue? Alright, let's look upwards too just in case of these trees and stuff. Before we, I want to look around before I look at the body. There's always stuff in the ground and everything all over the place here. What's this about this doorway? doorway? This door must lead to the cellar. The latch has been recently repaired. Okay. Do I go in there? Okay, let's look at this wall. This fence separates the courtyard from the neighbors, 27 Hanbury Street. Okay. What about this blood stain here? No, no, no. No. I want to look at the blood stain. Oh, okay, that's looking at the body. Okay, really. What about this over here? Oh, that's the body. Okay, all right. What about those things that were on the ground there? Oh, yeah, here we go. What's this? Okay, what about these things? It's like a comb. Two combs, curiously arranged. Okay, what's this? A piece of coarse muslin. Oh, really? Okay. The items at the victim's, victim's feet are very orderly. Odd. These items fell at the moment of the murder. The items belong to the killer. These items belong to the victim. I have no proof of any of that, so let's get out of this. What was, uh... Wasn't there a third thing here? There are no trails on the ground. There's no sign of a struggle. Yeah, okay. That's what it was. What is this thing here? Come on. Okay. Uh, it looks like a scrap of something with some lettering on it. It says London, 28 August, 1888. The Royal Sussex... What is it, Regiment? Looks like, uh, okay. Looks like there's a letter M, number 2, and an S. Interesting. Oh, it's an envelope. Okay. Scarping of an envelope. Okay. A torn envelope. It smells of rubbing alcohol. It contains three pills. I will take one. Two should suffice for the police. Rubbing alcohol. It's very strange. All right, hold on. Let me get off this. Hold on. Let me back up here. Buddy, I need to look and see what's going on here again. Okay. Yeah, the walls, the blood spurts, and the body itself. Okay. Let's look at this. The blood is a dozen inches or so from the ground. Blood stains on the wall. Blood stains on the wall. A dozen inches from the ground, so... It's... So he killed her on the ground, and then spurred it up. So she died on the ground. Maybe. Alright, let's take a look at the body here, I guess. So, Doctor, shall we examine our victim? Ah, I'm tired, Holmes. I'm not sure if I am in a state to do this work. Come, Watson, there is little time. Show me what you're made of. Oh, my God. Pray, Watson, pull yourself together. Can you establish the time of the crime? The extremities of the corpse are cold and rigor mortis is beginning to set in. I would say that the murder was committed over two hours ago, before 4.30 a.m. Hmm. Hmm. Thank God they don't actually show the body. <laughs> They're just showing the outline like that, so it doesn't look so horrible. Uh, 
at least I thought of that. That's a very stylistic way of doing it in a very nice, without being gruesome about the whole thing. My God, is that, is that, is that the woman's intestines? Wow, okay. Let's stop with that first. Now, let's look at the stomach, or at least what remains of it. Oh, yeah. It's dreadful, Holmes. Who could do that to someone? That's what you're here for, Watson. Tell me what this man has done. The stomach has been entirely opened and... Oh, my God! A number of organs have been removed. So, you're telling me that the organs were removed, Watson. They weren't ripped out. Not at all, Holmes. On the contrary, this is clearly the work of an expert. I couldn't have done any better myself. And the uterus is missing. What? what? Wow. That's gross. By the way, that reminds me. Remember, these are real murders, right? This really happened. Think about it. Why would somebody take out... Why would somebody arrange somebody's organs on the ground? Like, next... Why would somebody remove somebody's organs? It, they couldn't replace... It's not like back then that they could replace them or anything. Like, they could sell them, you know, sell, sell them on the black market, like, for replacements for somebody else or something like that. You know, they couldn't do that back then. They couldn't do transplants like that. But... Okay, let's see what we got going on here. It just makes me wonder what I wonder what they did. I mean, I wonder why. Looky here. It would oh seem he has a mark on his left hand. Her left hand. <laughs> oh my god, that is so creepy looking. Wow. They have a picture of a real hand here, like and it is so creepy looking. What's that? Mm, she have a ring here? Something? Or? Oh. Use a magnifying glass. Okay, what's that mark there? What about the thumb? Okay, the ring thing The victim here. must have worn oh. a large ring or several little ones, and someone pulled them off forcefully. This detail will be very valuable, Watson. You can be sure of that. Really? What about the fingernails? Anything? Oh, what's that? Is that a scar? Bruise? No. Okay. Okay, close. Thank you. Hold on, let me look just in case a little bit more. Close anything on the body itself. Just checking. Doesn't look like anything. The victim must have worn a large ring. Yeah. Wow, okay. This hand is creepy. I need to get out of that. <laughs> right. That did not look cool. Let's look at this poor woman more closely. Okay. Um. Alright, let's take a look at this. Uh, how about her hands? Anything? Does it look like it? Her neck, her, okay. Here you go, she has two vicious, ooh, God, two vicious gashes on her neck. Oh, well, it looks like they start at the same place, but then they, oh, he made two gashes at the same place and then they ended up in two Look different at her places. neck, what can you tell me? There are two incisions. Oh. Look at her neck, what can you tell me? There are two incisions. Her tongue again. The tongue is swollen. It's another strangling thing on your ass. 
Bruised. Not more bruises on her face. The victim's face appears to have bruising, wouldn't you say? Under the maxilla and cheek. There is less on the right side. My dear Watson, now that we have found all of our clues, nothing remains but to subject them to our most likely hypotheses in order to deduce the facts. The facts, here we go. Okay, so I'm not going to do this here right now. This is going to take too long. But I, I, I'm just going to take a look at these real quick. Um, that's actually, wow, that's actually really interesting. Uh, well, I mean, interesting as far as the game is concerned, because he seems to have killed her the same way as the other one. I'm, I'm wondering what the game is going to do. I'm wondering what they're going to say, like... Are they, they going to go off in some kind of weird direction and say it's a vampire or something? Or are they going to explain, trying to explain who did it, or what? That's really weird. <laughs> okay. All right, let's look at this real fast. The murder of Amy Chapman. Oh, okay, it is. That's her. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I, I better stop here because this this will. Yeah, it's past thirty minutes, so I will read real quick. Neither are footsteps nor are streaks of blood on the ground. The blood in the fence is of, is a dozen inches off the ground. Some blood spurted on the wall near the stairs. The victim has bruises under the right jawbone and beneath the left cheek. The tongue is bloated. An envelope is near the victim's head. The items at the victim's feet are very orderly. The body is cold at the extremities and rigor mortis has already started. Recent large scrape of the first phalanx of the middle finger. There is an incision form to the right um, the incision form the right to the left I think it's supposed to be from from the right to the left going around the neck there is an incision on the neck from the right side stopping in the middle of the throat the wound around the neck is jerky and not all in one piece that's yeah that's what I thought was weird too organs are missing the uterus was removed by the hands of an expert. How do you remove someone's uterus? I don't even know how that's done. Wouldn't that be like scraping out their entire... St like slicing it? Oh, wow. I, I don't even want to go into it. I don't even know how that's like done. I don't, I don't understand that. I'll have to take a look at an actual picture of a body just to even... I, I need to look at a, like a biography picture of a body uh, just to even understand how somebody's entire uterus could be taken out. Because I just don't even... I don't even understand... I really don't understand it. I, I think I just... Maybe I just don't know enough about women's anatomy in order to figure that out. But okay, anyway, uh, thank you for joining me. We're going to go through this next, the deduction board. I just wanted to show you real quick. And uh, we'll figure out the, the murder of poor Annie Chapman. Okay, at 29 Hanbury Street. So, uh, thank you for joining me on Money Says. And uh, please like and subscribe and all that if you want to. Uh, and... Join me next time, so we'll see what happens. Uh, goodbye for now.